Lucy Rashi, originally from Seattle, Washington, studied art at Pacific Northwest College and earned a degree in psychology from the University of Oregon. Jessie's work can be found in private and public collections around the world. She has had artwork published in many magazines and newspapers, most notably South Dakota Magazine and the Oakwood Literary Magazine. Jessie and her family live in Brookings, where she paints and maintains a studio. Jessie's work can currently be seen in the South Dakota Governor's Biennial. And then I think, Tom, you have work in a couple other shows right now, a couple other juried shows. Yeah. Um, Oil Painters of America, um, I got into their national exhibition, which is super exciting and that's happening right now um and american impressionist society i got into their um small works show uh which is really neat and also my first show in the south um and um american impressionist society has their first online um associates only or or associate members only um exhibition and so i just got the news that i got into that and um and then i have something at the washington pavilion for their current exhibition and the um center for western studies for their current exhibition pandemic show yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. um so um I mean, do you spend a lot of time? Is this really, I mean, is this kind of, uh, it seems like right now there's a lot of shows associated with the, you know, that are like, I don't know, pandemic themed sort of, I mean, uh, um, or is this kind of like part of your practice? I mean, do you spend a lot of time seeking out shows and? Um, So I uh, have been an on and off member of Oil Painters of America and American Impressionist Society for, I don't know, about six years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really like both organizations, but um, it's it sort of takes mental energy to apply to these shows and... Yeah. Um, and it's so heartbreaking to not get in. <laughs> and um, I mean, I've just. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm getting at. I think you're a lot tougher than I am is what I'm kind of. Yeah. And so, and so sometimes I take a break, but this year I decided I wanted to um, be in both of those organizations and then apply to everything. And mm-hmm. so far I've, I've gotten into all of them, but um this is the first year where I've actually had a strategy <laughs> where I'm specifically um, like, I know what shows they're having and I'm holding back artwork and not making it available. If I feel like it is my best chance at getting into one of those shows. And mm-hmm. um, I've never really done that before or you know planned it out very much. Um, Seems to be working though. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is working, and um, and I'm I feel kind of silly that I've never done that before, <laughs> but um, but and then Center for Western Studies, I just I think it's really neat showing there, um, and they actually invited me to their next exhibition, which is farm related, um, and I just within the last year realized that I'm actually an agricultural artist. I never really noticed that before it snuck up on me. So, um, so I'm really excited about that. And, um, and then Washington Pavilion, they gave me a, a solo show, um, this year. And so I just feel kind of, um, like I, I just, I like them and I think, they have a wonderful space and a great yeah. there, but but also I appreciate that they did that. So I am um, I'm applying to their other uh, opportunities. Yeah. So um, I should probably welcome you to South Dakota because you've only been here how many years? Uh, eight years now. Yeah. Wow. Um. So I and you came from Washington State, mm-hmm. the Seattle area. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so kind of urban, yep. hilly, mountainous, maybe yep. <laughs> even. There's an ocean somewhere there nearby. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, I mean, it seems like uh, how, that, what was your work? Like? How did your work change? I mean, what? Or I'm kind of interested to hear about your work in Seattle too. I mean, that must have been, I mean, the, you had a lot of uh, different um, well, kind of. I, I actually didn't take the leap to become a professional artist until right before we left Seattle. So I had always been making my own art, but it was um, just for fun. And um, and uh, so I was not prolific like I am now. And um, I wasn't, um, I, I was just having fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I had art, related jobs. I was a medical illustrator for a little while, which was amazing. And, um, and then I was a media developer out at Microsoft, which was really cool place to work. Um, and then, um, and then when our son was born, I stayed home with him and, and just really got the fire to try to, um, to follow my passion with my artwork. And, uh, and so I, I wasn't really painting seriously like this in Seattle. Um, we moved to Eastern Washington for several years and that's where I really started um, um, painting professionally. And, um, and so I was painting a lot of mom and baby portraits at the time and just really small little portraits. And it was very wonderful. Um, and um, also little teeny, like six by six um, daily paintings. So I was part of the daily painting movement. Um, so a lot of still life setups and um, just really trying to learn as much as I could about how to mix color and how to capture shadow and all of the uh, technical aspects of painting and and um, and then when we moved to South Dakota, I mean back there I had been doing some little landscapes, but I wasn't very serious about it. And then when we moved to South Dakota, that's when I really paint, started painting landscapes and just getting bigger and bigger and um, and so it's been a progression of my skills, but also just the different landscape that I see here. And um, and we're on the edge of our little college town. And so um, you can see cows not very far away and, and horses. And um, it's just a very different um, atmosphere. Uh, what's the daily painting movement? I'm, I guess I'm not familiar with that. That sounds interesting. Yeah, so it's um, it's a group of artists, uh, not like an organized group of artists, but it's a it's a, it's a group of artists who um, try to paint every day and to paint very small paintings that can be finished quickly, with um, kind of the intention of um, well of of just honing the craft and um, doing more small works instead of, um, and, and selling directly instead of, um, you know, larger oh. framed works through galleries and things like that. So it's kind of like a hashtag out on the internet somewhere. If I, well, um, or is uh, it... I'm not sure if it's a hashtag, but it's, um, there's some really uh, amazing artists that are, part of this movement. Yeah. Um, Carol Marine is a uh, pretty well known. Um, and she has a, her husband's a developer. So he made a website where uh, daily painters can sell their mm. uh, work. Sorry about the buzzing. I'll make that stop. And then um, I'm actually in the middle of a really neat workshop by um, Chang Wang, who is um, 
a wonderful painter, but he was part of the daily painting movement. And um, so that's how I, I first saw him uh, like 12 years ago. Wow. Well, no, that sounds like a really good way to get excited about painting and yeah, get into it. I think so. And to learn a lot about yourself and what you want to paint, it's like such a small time investment that you can experiment with things that maybe you wouldn't want to spend the time experimenting on larger. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, you have one of the best artist websites around that I know <laughs> of. Yeah. And so do you, was your experience at Microsoft, did that somehow, um, I mean, who, like, do you have a professional web developer work on it or web designer or is this yours? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm my own professional web okay. <laughs> designer. Yeah. And so I use WordPress and um, I just tinker with the, with the coding and, um, and so it's been sort of a labor of love for the last, uh, I guess, 12 years, 13 years. So is this the, the WordPress that you download locally onto your computer? Is this a, like um, are you using their online? Um, so I've been kind of playing around with both, but I haven't figured out what. Yeah. So um, my mom is... Uh, sort of an internet personality and she has a number of different websites and um and so she is my host um okay and um and wordpress itself comes with the hosting so you can install it from the host and i know that there are a number of hosts that do that so if you get any of the standard hosts um when you sign up and tell them what your um, domain is or you buy your domain they'll let you install wordpress from there and then you get to log in uh to to the back side of it um from the internet and um and just alter it from there oh yeah well it's just great to see i, I kind of play around with wordpress and i wonder you know if it's the right thing to do but obviously there's uh it's possible to get some really fantastic results i think this is cool um so where what should we look at here what do you think cows horses um, portraits what do you want to <laughs> i think we should look at some paintings yeah um so if you click on shop artwork and the little down arrow okay um yeah if you click on birds that's one of the I love birds. things that i've been having a lot of fun with yeah i was so shocked that there are pelicans in south dakota oh okay <laughs> and so i take photos of them whenever i get a chance and um so mostly i'm a studio artist so i take a lot of photos and paint in mm -hmm. the studio at, from my photos and um and so these guys both have um birds that are very small <laughs> but if you if but you they're there them, you see more like bird portraits and things below yeah and, oh yeah these are the reflection is really fantastic it's oh, really nice. You. Um, okay, I like the real um, brushy, loose, um, kind of almost, I mean, I, I say unfinished, but I mean unfinished in a really nice painterly sort of way. Um, look at these paintings. And one thing, um, like, uh, I, I, I kind of had to quit or get away from photo reference because I would fiddle with the paintings and just keep, how do you, I mean, do you have, is it just from experience or do you have sort of a, um, like a method or a system where you say, yeah, this is it. I'm done. Yeah. Well, um, do you ask your husband? <laughs> I, I drive my wife no, crazy. Come no, down here. No. 
I yeah, I've never actually had an issue with that except for portraits where mm. um you know, I really want to capture so much about a person and I'll end up with very small brushes. But um but I have just always loved brush marks so much that um if I if I put down brush marks that I think are beautiful, I have, I don't have the urge to um, blend or, or anything like that. Um, and so I've never had to fight that particular uh, battle, but, um, but I think, um, I, I mean, I do have a process and I do stand back a lot and I observe from a distance and I try to always be arm's length um, right. and to use bigger brushes. And I was, I felt like I was using pretty big brushes, but um, I've, I've just started using a two inch brush <laughs> and okay. I realized that, um, you know, my brushes were pretty small compared to that. So do you have a, a brush that you like your two inch brush that you like? I have discovered, or it seems to me like the quality of art supplies has just tanked in like the last 50, 10 years, even. Yeah. And I have a really hard time finding brushes I like. That's really interesting. Well, I, I do have some brushes I love, but also um, Carolyn Anderson, who's a master painter, um, like a very brushy impressionist wonderful painter um she just had a blog post a couple weeks ago about how um brushes are not lasting as long so mm. some people have 30 year old brushes that are still in great shape and then five-year-old brushes that have fallen apart and that's um they're just not lasting as long for some crazy reason um well i'm finding it hard to just find a brush that'll hold its shape yeah. You know, that's, I, know. I, I don't, have one, if you don't mind my running over there. <laughs> no, please do. This is something that's, I'm going to just uh, highlight a few paintings. Oh. I love it. Hey, can you hear me? Um, yeah. I just love this magnify feature. This is so cool. <laughs> Awesome. So you can you can see the brushwork. Yeah, this is like um, I don't know. I feel like I'm on the Metropolitan Museum's website. Oh, okay. you know where you can zoom in. Well, websites are funny. Like I just I've put so much time into it, and then um, it's not something that people usually comment on. So um, I appreciate that so much. <laughs> Yeah, those guys, they're one of my favorites. Uh, that's these, per, this particular painting is really, um, it's where I want to be with more of my art with um, just so much is implied. And, um, and so, yeah. Okay, so what do we have for brushes? So this is, uh, probably my favorite brush right now. It's not an expensive brush. Um, so this is a silver Grand Prix Filbert. This one is a size four. It's um, and it's a long handle. Okay. And it keeps its shape. You can tell I I don't <laughs> wash them. And then this is the same brush, but it's a size two. Um, and I had been brushing along and feeling like, oh, I must not be taking care of my brushes because I'm just not happy with my marks anymore. And I, I ordered new brushes, even though I was feeling kind of guilty about it. And then look what I discovered. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see the difference right here? Let me. Oh, wait. Um, oops. Yeah. I'm trying to, let's see, I'm going to make, no, I'm trying to make you big. 
Well, yeah. So, um, if you can see, these are exactly. Oh, the wow. Are. Yeah. You've been busy. Well, yeah. And they, they do wear down pretty quickly. Um, I, I paint every day. I paint a lot. Um, but still, yeah, you know, they cost six bucks. So it's like, um, you can, yeah. You can replace them every six months. All right. I'm going to look for, um, I'll have to go back and I was playing around with the website. So I missed the brand, but I'll, I can go back Oh, one more time for anybody. Sure. Hopefully there's some painters listening. So these are just called silver grand pre filberts, silver filberts. Okay. And then, um, like on your website, you have some really great lessons. So yeah. part of that looseness comes from um you know like the whole you have well i think i I watched the pencil is there a right way to hold a pencil yeah. or is there an artist anyway so there's a lot of uh everybody should check out jesse's uh uh well it's not your website it's on you you have a youtube channel as well i do yeah yeah well thank you yeah and um i think I think pencil drawing is really wonderful. You can um, you can do it without any art supplies. <laughs> you just need a scrap of paper and a regular old pencil and an eraser. <laughs> and right. um, and so the barrier to entry for that art form is so much lower than any other art form, I think. And also, you could just do it while you're on your break. If you've got 10 minutes and you're stressed out at work, you can just, you know, draw your coffee mug and kind of meditate a little bit. So, do you find uh, drawing is an important part of your painting practice? I mean, does it some one feed the other somehow? Yeah, yeah. I think having a strong foundation in drawing makes me feel a lot more confident and, um, and I think also it makes me, um, you know, I know that I can test things out. I can test things on a piece of paper if I want. Um, and, um, and I treat my canvas a little bit like paper. I can, you know, try to map things in. And if I don't like it, I erase it and move it. And that's part of my process too. So it feels like kind of an extension of drawing in a way. Uh, hey, can we talk about this painting a little bit? Yeah. I find this interesting. Awesome. So um, this is a farm that is um, several miles outside Brookings. It's um, if you were going out towards Oakwood State Park, it's sort of to the northwest. Okay. And um, I just love the um the colors of snow on the fields and on the dirt and like the brown or the amber with the creamy white and hmm. i'm also very partial to strong atmosphere like foggy days make me really really happy so I I just thought this was really neat, and I wanted to capture that sort of um, waxy, foggy feeling. And so, yeah, I like uh, the sense of scale. <laughs> I mean, it's really nice. You get that. It's sometimes it's hard. Uh, I mean, like the painting the prairie, I think, is really difficult. It's hard to kind of capture the beauty of this open um empty space but part of the beauty is sort of the the just the the scale of everything and the yeah. the emptiness yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like there's sort of this grandeur to it yeah um and uh you know you really get with this painting i like that there's uh and um yeah the aerial perspective is cool Thank it's you. really great. Um, okay. And then, um, geez, I think we've been talking for 20 minutes already. Um, like, do you have a, maybe we could, I'll just hit a couple of these questions. Maybe there's pet portraits. I don't know. Do you do a lot of pet portraits? 
Um, no, I paint a lot of animals and I've done a few pet portraits. Um, and um, to me, your pet is part of the family. So it, it emotionally, it feels the same as painting people, but, um, but technically it's a little bit different. Um, but um, yeah, if you click on the portraits button, I um, I made a new website. I was testing out to see if having keywords in my URL would um, help with my SEO at all. And yeah. it, it really makes no difference. So I'm not sure I'll have a separate website for portraits um, next year, <laughs> but right now I do. <laughs> and so I, I do a lot of testing like that, but. So you're not necessarily pushing the the pet portrait end of. I'm not pushing pet portraits. Um, I am. Um, I still do a number of uh, parent and baby portraits every year, and mm -hmm. I really love those. And most of my paintings have um, more than one living thing in them. You know, so there'll be a couple animals relating to each other like this one right here uh, uh, right behind me you know there's a, a couple animals hanging out together and um and um i've got a lot of um <laughs> parent and baby portraits actually right in the studio right here but um but uh so i i love doing that and um and um, yeah, I mean, it's really, I think it's really neat when somebody has something special, like, um, you know, they want a portrait of somebody they love. And so, um, and so, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, so I, I love doing the pet portraits, but I, I don't push it. It's just if somebody who's already a collector comes to me and says, Hey, I want a portrait of my pet, then, um then I'm, I'm honored to do that. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, I ended up somehow I did a parrot pet portrait and I think I still get a Christmas card from this guy. Wow. He was, <laughs> I mean, of all the paintings of, uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, people love their pets. Hey, um, so I've kind of been trying to, I've been asking everybody, like, how did you get started with, I mean, how did you first become interested in art? Part of this is because in South Dakota, a lot of us don't have a lot of, I mean, we're not like surrounded by art um, exactly. But um, I mean, like even in Seattle, I suppose there are kids that, I mean, like how, what, what happens? How do you get pulled into this world of art? Yeah, and so um, my mom uh, is an artist. And when I was little, she, um, sold artwork at the Pike Place Market in Seattle. Mm. And so I was around um, a number of artists and um, and there were some, some really great artists that would show me techniques of, you know, moving watercolor around on paper and, mm. um, and different kind of drawing techniques and, um, I just, I was enchanted by it and, um, and right after high school, I just went to art school. It wasn't, um, I just kind of knew I was going to do that. It wasn't a big decision. Hmm. Um, and it was wonderful. I, I really loved it. But, um, at the time I didn't realize, uh, like I didn't know how to make it into a career, and um, and there wasn't um, there wasn't the kind of career planning in art school back then that there is now, um, and and there weren't as many options I think either. You now you can follow a million different paths and be a professional artist, but back then I think you could. You know, you could be an illustrator or you could, you know, have a 
strong connection with a gallery. Um, there were a few different paths, but not as many as today. So, um, yeah, I think the internet just uh, changed everything. Okay. Shoot. Okay, found. All right, darn it. I'm not. Oh, is it not working? Well, I see painted portraits on my screen, but it's not. I think oh, I have to share. There's a portrait here I want to ask you about. Sure. Um, okay, we're going to share screen. Um, okay. This is a nice composition. Oh, thank you. Um, I like the the crop. I like the way the dog is staring directly off the canvas. I mean, it's kind of unusual. It's sort of like something maybe, you know, Manet or, I mean, can you, might, I mean, I would think of like from that kind of, uh, yeah, I, you know. this was one I did for myself. And so, um, and so I was just really having fun with it. And, um, and my son was reading Calvin and Hobbes there. And mm -hmm. so I was kind of thinking about his dramatic, um, like he's a fan, the, the person who does Calvin and Hobbes is just a fantastic artist. And, um, and so I was thinking about sort of his dramatic styling and, um, and, and I just, I broke a lot of rules, you know, I, um, I, had fun with our dog with his nose almost pressed up against the edge, like just like pointing like an arrow right out of the picture. And then his shadow just pointing like an arrow <laughs> over at the, at, at uh, my son. And then, you know, that really strong contrast just on the cushion where it's, um, you know, uh, sort of background, but, um, I know. I just had I had a lot of fun breaking rules in this one. Okay. Well, hey, um, this was great. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Man. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, hey, um so what you okay, you have your website, which is pretty easy to find. I mean, you show up, type Jesse Rashi into Google, it's right there, which is pretty remarkable. Um, so you're easy to find. Um, what uh, and you have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and is there anything else you'd like to really um, tell yeah. people about? Emphasize. Yeah. So um, I have a class that is enrolling right now that I'm really excited about. Um, I have a few great artists that are already part of it, and. Um, and it's an ongoing class for um, people to get um, sort of more support in their artwork and it's very affordable. Um, so I, I hope people will go check that out. And, um, and I also have a bunch of free resources, different um, painting demos and drawing tutorials and um, kind of showing people um, ways to draw in general um, and just get more confident with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, hey, I really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you.